Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be testing two solar panels from XSTAR. Now you guys know the XSTAR SP100. It's one of the best performing panels that I've tested in the 100 watt category. Well, they have a new model. This is the XSTAR SP150. Now this is a quad fold design, so it's basically double the size of that one. But how does it do on actual power? So in this video, we'll be testing each one of these panels to see how they perform. Let's stop wasting time and jump right into the testing. Now, as for the solar conditions today, it's around 85 degrees. We have a few clouds, a little bit of haze, so I'm not sure we'll see full rated power from these panels. Now, both of these panels are really easy to set up. They have really nice kickstands, ETFE coatings, and they are properly angled at the sun now, and they've had a chance to warm up so we can get some realistic numbers on them. Now we'll be testing with two different charge controllers in the video today to verify the solar output from these panels. I put them in the shade here. This is the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. This accepts up to 220 watts of charging input, so we should have plenty of leeway there. The next option that we'll be testing with is this 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with my Blue Sky MPPT solar charge controller. So we'll first start with the EcoFlow River 2 Pro and then we'll test with this to see if we get any difference. Now I've gone ahead and plugged in the XSTAR SP150 to the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. So let's see how many watts we're getting. So with the panel plugged in, we're getting 155 watts charging input from the SP150. Now I've gone ahead and connected the XSTAR SP100 to the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. So let's see what we're getting on this one. So with the SP100 plugged in, we're getting 92 watts charging input on the EcoFlow River 2 Pro. Well, now that we've completed the testing with the EcoFlow River 2 Pro, I want to plug the panels into the Blue Sky MPPT solar charge controller. It gives us a breakdown of the voltage and the amperage, which helps us understand what's going on with the panels a little bit better. Now I've gone ahead and connected the SP150 to the Blue Sky charge controller. Now every charge controller behaves a little bit differently. So we're getting 16.1 volts at 8.9 amps, right around 144 watts from the SP150. So let's go ahead and plug in the SP100 to see what we're getting on that one. Now with the SP100 connected, we're getting 16.2 volts. So very similar voltage, right around 5.59 amps and 90 watts. So there are your differences in power between both of the panels. Now, pretty interesting results. We saw actually more wattage from the EcoFlow River 2 Pro charge controller. Maybe that one's a little bit more efficient. And uh, I did like the breakdown where we were able to see the voltage and amperage on the Blue Sky. Now let's go ahead and do a couple more tests with these panels, including partial shading and laying them flat. Now in the next test, I wanna test for partial shading on both these panels. Now, if you'll notice, this is a quad fold design. So there are four panels that are wired together, but they could be wired together in series or parallel. Now, parallel gives you really good partial shading performance. So I've put a piece of cardboard here in the middle. Now we have this one exposed to the sun and this one exposed to the sun. Are we gonna get half power or zero power? Let's go ahead and see what we're getting. Now, looking at the charge controller with the SP150 covered with cardboard, we're getting 16.4 volts at 4.4 amps. And look at that, guys. We're getting 73 watts output even with it covered halfway with cardboard. So these are in fact wired together in parallel for really good partial shading results. Now I've gone ahead and covered up half the SP100 with cardboard. So let's see how this one's wired together. Are we gonna get half the power or no power at all? So taking a look at the results with the SP100 covered up with cardboard. Look at that guys, hardly any power at all. That means that both halves are wired together in series. So you won't get very good partial shading performance with the SP100. So let's go ahead and break down the results of the partial shading testing. The SP150, these are wired together in parallel, giving it a better advantage in partial shading. And the SP100, these are wired together in series, so it does not do very well in partial shading. Now, what's the application for that? Well, you can see I have this shade moving onto this panel. Basically, that means that as shade hits this panel, I'm still gonna get power from these three. And for the SP100, if shade was on this panel right here, I would lose power to the whole entire thing. Now, is that a deal breaker for me? Not really, because I like to move my panels around. These are very lightweight and easy to move, and I try to get as much power as possible, so I just move the panels. But now you guys know how each one of these are wired together. Now, in the final test in this video, I've gone ahead and laid both the solar panels flat on the ground just to see how many watts we can get from each one. Now, I've gone ahead and plugged in the SP100 laying flat on the ground, bringing 16.3 volts at 5.27 amps. 85 to 86 watts of power laying flat. Now we are pretty near summer solstice, so the sun is really vertical in the sky right now. This would not be the case if it was spring, winter, or fall. Now with the SP150 laying flat on the ground, we're getting 16.13 volts at 8.15 amps, 
right around 131 watts of power. So pretty respectable for laying flat on the ground. Like I said, we're near summer solstice, so not bad results at all. Okay, so we've done all the testing on both these panels. We saw 93 watts from the SP100 and around 155 watts from the SP150. Now the conditions aren't perfect today, so I would expect a little bit more power from these, but not too bad at all. Now these have really good build quality. You have your ETFE coatings, adjustable kickstands, they have MC4 connections. It's kind of what everyone is looking for. Now what about the actual price? Now the SP150 comes in at an MSRP of $399. Now they did provide a 10% off discount code that I'll include down in the video description so you guys can save around $40 off the MSRP. Now I'd love to get your guys' feedback. What do you guys think about the XTAR SP150? What do you guys think about the performance and the price? Let me know in a comment down below. I do have a large comparison video that I'm gonna be doing with a lot of solar panels coming up in the near future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.